Hi there friends and welcome to my guide for the apostate class in Tainted Grail Conquest. I'm Icon and this video will guide you through the basic gameplay of this class. I'm going to talk about its pros and cons, things you might want to know when you draft cards, draft skills, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the equipment specializations too. As usual, this guide will be introducing no cookie cutter builds. I'm not going to introduce the insane combos or anything. This video is meant to give you a good baseline understanding of that character class and afterwards go forward, develop your own playstyle and do crazy things with that. So, with that being said, let's explore our character class a little bit first. The Apostate has a specialization on flipping maneuvers. This is really cool and way more fun than I originally thought. So, the Apostate's ultimate ability is revolving entirely around flipping cards. It charges up when we flip a card and it lets us flip all cards yet again when we use it and gain damage. The most important things here to know is that we get more damage the more charges we have and the more maneuvers we have on our hand when we use it. But in case you are a little bit confused about all this, let's talk about maneuvers for a second to make things clear. The maneuver cards from the Archer class in general have several states therein, like here the baseline defense skill, feints, has the feints side and then it flips over to unbreakable feints. What the apostate can do with his uh, ultimate, he can flip those cards into a new state and gain damage with, uh, for that. And beyond that, he's also gaining ultimate charges whenever he, we use these skills. This by itself doesn't sound too fantastic, but it really gets some steam once we check out the flipping spree passive, which is uh, the, the basic passive the apostate uh, comes with. So flipped cards stay in hand instead of going to the grave. With all the other um, archers, when you play a flipped card, it goes away into the uh, discard pile, and the next time you draw it, you draw it as the flipped version. The apostate, though, can play a card, he flips it and takes it back into his into his hand. So basically, apostates never lose their maneuvers on their hand when they play them. They just uh, can keep playing them. This results in a very, very cool thing, and that's apostates can just play feints and then unbreakable feints right away. You can play bow draw and hold a bow right away. So unlike the other classes, they're you can you can utilize all steps of these maneuver cards in one turn which is not possible for the other uh, classes because they throw it away and then they have to redraw it it's way more effort to play the same maneuver twice in the same turn for all other archer classes but okay enough of that also you draw one additional card for every second maneuver used in a turn so whenever we play the second maneuver per turn we even draw cards this all together gives the apostate an insane amount of cards in the in his hand to work with and it's insanely much fun so we now will check out the cards you have in the starting deck i want to talk about the um specialty moves of the apostate before we head out to our first enemy the idea card makes the next maneuver cost no energy which is really awesome because this is an open invitation to play with really costy maneuvers because you will always have an have a option on your hand to make it cheaper that's pretty cool and the other side is the stunning idea, letting you discard all maneuvers and reduce the armor of all enemies by 5 per discarded maneuver. This is really powerful because permanent armor reduction is extremely nice and this way you can trigger that every turn if you are able to set it up. Highly unlikely, but theoretically possible. The other card is the Glimpse of Possibility, letting you draw two more cards with reduced energy costs and the other side of it lets you discard again all maneuvers and redraw cards. So the apostate comes with options to utilize all those maneuvers in your hand into big into big explosions like armor disruption or a massive redraw. Really useful, really really useful things. So let's get outside there and clap some monsters and show you how these things look like in motion. 
because it's all nice to talk about that theoretically. It's way nicer to show that in motion. This is difficulty level 5 here, in case you're wondering. So we have a little bit of pressure on ourselves, but not too much. So we get our enemy here, and the basic uh, behavior of this class is quite similar to the other archer classes. Feints is producing armor and then barrier equal to the armor, which is a little bit iffy, but you get used to it. So the basic defense of this class works just like with the other classes. You play feints, gain some barrier out of that, and then you can decide, in this case, if you want to go for unbreakable feints to gain even more barrier, which is then 15, because your armor rating is 10. So basically the second time you play this, you get five armor, uh, five barrier more, which is really cool, or you do other things. Since this covers up all the damage this guy does, I'm not going to spam more defenses. Not a big fan of spamming too many defenses. So let's hammer out the idea. And let's, as we see here, we get the bow draw skill basically for free, 25% more damage. And now the basic strategy with this class for me is that I either try to flip as many cards as possible per turn to charge this up, or I really like to end my turns if possible with the stunning idea. For example, here we can reduce this guy's armor by 20 and then we attack. The attacking is usually one of the last things you do with the apostate because you first plan out your maneuvers for the turn and then you go for more. Here I uh, kind of like gimped myself because I forgot that he grows stronger with every hit. Whatever. So here we go for the next thing. We have a glimpse of possibility which is extremely nice. Oh well, Tainted Force, why not? And to play that we go for the idea, get that going and draw two new free cards and as you see here things are already going quite crazy but we're not done yet with the crazy we have now unlocked our ultimate skill you can basically activate once you have five charges what i really want to uh, emphasize here is one cool thing so if we would use that right now we would gain 50 percent plus 10 percent damage for each maneuver so right now we got five maneuver cards in our hands, so pretty good deal, let's do that. But watch one thing, we regain five charges immediately. So the funny thing about the apostate is, when we use the ultimate, we regain ultimate charges just by using it. So if you time it right, you can keep always a, a decent amount of stacks online to power up your attacks turn by turn. So here I feel like this is already enough. We can take down this guy. I would have had even more arrow quiver cards to uh, take him down. In case you are new to the class and you didn't uh, watch my uh, video before, quiver cards here generate arrows from your uh, from whatever the quiver depicts, and they always cost you ultimate charges. They cost you energy and ultimate charges in addition to that. So you spend your shots with ultimate charges. When drafting cards, I can't emphasize enough the value of armor gaining cards. The next thing is stat reducing cards for the enemy, armor reducers for the enemy, or damage reducers for the enemy, or of course stuns. The archer class is a little bit low on stuns because, well, stuns are pretty powerful, but you can find a few. I mean, the smoke shot is your basic stun, as you see here, but it also increases the enemy's armor. Therefore, armor reduction, really good. And every multi-step maneuver is your best friend. We see here, this is just a uh, massive armor gain maneuver. I like that. Why? Because these make your feints maneuvers way more effective because every one of your blocks is always interacting more or less directly with your armor. So there's one more thing I want to talk about and that's uh, the barrier gain for missing armor on the Archer class. This is a really fun mechanic because when sometimes you have to spend armor points to get a certain effect, there's a, one card which increases your damage in exchange for armor rating for a couple of turns. So if you ever go negative in your armor rating, it's not that big 
steel. You gain a lot of uh, barrier on top of that, but it's really important, and that's closing the loop back to the armor gainers. You start the turn with negative armor, you gain barrier, and then you try to pump up your armor again to lower the impact and re put up your barrier gain uh, cycle again. So with the passive skills, well, it is uh, up to you. I personally love everything which increases my armor. <laughs> I already mentioned that a lot. And everything which increases damage. There are traits which give you extra effects on flips. This is uh, basically one of the best things. And my personal favorite is the more generalized and the more often a perk can trigger the better. Like I would favor perks like this once per combat is le is a little bit less favorable than here after every six maneuver i stun a random enemy well okay six maneuvers in one turn sounds hard but this class can pull this off or after ending a turn with unused energy draw additional maneuvers this is here the most interesting for me because simple statement in all of these games the more cards the more options the more chances to win and since the apostate utilizes the uh, a lot of these discard effects as well it's really powerful to have more cards when it comes down to picking perks it's always a decision on which cards you have and which mechanics you or can utilize at that point so here we have another situation which i want to show off there so multiple enemies are a bit harder for the um, apostate than single enemies i personally think the apostate really shines when it comes down to single enemies but due to the fact that you have so many different options it's not that horrible at all so we're going to pick out the idea and now i want to well, i have to play unbreakable feints and as you see here that's why armor is so important we have one side of our defense card which only yields barrier if we have more armor than zero but now well we gained a new card and let's start playing our defenses my basic my my basic approach is always trying to have as much barrier as the enemies will deal damage to me here we see nine and two times four to five so we're definitely going to block that and then i start dealing my damage the basics are always the same for me so here i don't want to use my ultimate charges before i can use the flip skill here i don't i mean i could draw a lot more um, cards to hurt the enemy but at this point i personally think it's not worth it i just used the shots that i had and now i'm waiting for more charges because Always keep in mind, using your ultimate before attacking powers up every single attack so massively, and that's why you should go for that. Another really cool thing that I like about the Apostate's ultimate is you can also use it to move cards into your favor. So for example, here I'm not too happy with the stunning idea because there's so much damage coming up towards me. I don't like that. So we're going to play the Glimpse of Possibility to draw two cards. And of course, we're going to go now for the ultimate skill. Flip those cards. And now we have the idea back online, so we can now play feints, play idea, play unbreakable feints, and as you see here we've woven a ton of different attacks on top of each other. We also have a lot more extra damage now, and we have some barrier to work with. So now with that increased damage I'm quite easy able to pick off that one enemy, and now we have pretty much damage on this dude. Well, this is also his trade. He's uh, delivering more hits each turn unless he's stunned. So we're going to stun him here and then end the turn, take no damage. And we still have eight charges available. And that's only because I didn't spend them at the beginning. So seriously, use your ultimate wisely when you have as many maneuvers on your hand as possible because that's when you get the most oomph out of that. So 
As you see here, we are pretty well able to take down our uh, problems here. Here, for example, I don't want the stunning idea again. I know that I will receive way less uh, charges out of that, but I still think it was a good deal using this one again and starting to buff up my damage a little bit more, start to stack up some defenses and we have a lot of damage this turn so this turn i'm going to eventually consider using the arrow bag but let's uh, just start firing on that one damage dealer as we see here we're not able to take him down so we're going to use our last points of energy to just pull <laughs> not two shots okay we can stun him one more time inefficient to do it like that but you get the idea it's uh a lot about planning your moves accordingly and thinking a lot of steps ahead and that's personally where I think the apostate is extremely difficult to play because you can gimp yourself very very easily if you if you mess up with uh, turn orders if you mess up with shot orders and all these things there's a lot of uh, room for messing yourself up and that's where i think the 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 fun in this uh, character class is lying in because i personally found the apostate to be a class which is quite easy to pick up but very difficult to master because there's uh, so much going on and you can draw so many new abilities and there are so many layers in between which makes him the most complex of the three archers so far in my opinion but at the same time I think the insane amount of options you have all these uh, maneuvers you can play make him very very versatile once you manage to get that knot out of your brain with all those flips and counter flips I really like that because it gives you a ton of options but at the same time it is not that easy to pull off but I have found for myself that just by simply stacking up armor like a madman and uh, picking up all buffing and debuffing maneuvers on the on the apostate I was already able to pull off insane stunts and really survive quite well the downside of all this you really have to work on your damage you it's, it's super easy to stay safe with the apostate but it's also super easy to run out of damage with this class so basically attacks like here the shot of destiny are wonderful it's increasing its damage for each card played when this card was in hand keep in mind that you will have to work on your offenses but your average damage is quite good due to the ultimate but in the later stages of the game, like chapter 3, if you haven't thought about a source of burst damage or AoE damage, you might want to fall, we might gonna fall flat on that. So that's that about this uh, playstyle here. Well, I would personally go for the pebble throw because I love to have extra stuns in my in my uh, in my deck and cards that reduce the damage of all enemies. They are so invaluable. Really, it's easy to underestimate the value of reducing the damage of the enemies. Okay, I think that sums up the playstyle of the apostate quite well. Let's get over to the village and check out the items. So, back in our jolly old village, we're gonna check out the beginner's rune stones. So, well. <laughs> On the weapon slot, I think the Ethel rune is basically made for the apostate. Each card played increases my damage. Sadly, the Ethel rune is also made for your armor slot, because increasing flat armor is just so insanely good for the archer class. I would always recommend you to use the Ethel rune in your armor before you use it for your weapon slots. So in case you don't have enough Ethel runes, don't you fret. There are other options. I personally love the Calc Rune for the weapon slot because in its first iteration it's only one turn of combat where you draw additional cards with cost reduction but the amount of turns scales up and having a strong start into the fight. Having the ability to play a ton of cards in the first turn can be really really a massive game changer. 
if that's not too much to your liking, the really... Well, the Gar rune is quite useful after all. Increasing your damage is worth mentioning due to a simple reason. The Archer classes stack percentile damage bonuses like candy. And, you know, if you're, if you're talking about, like, let's say, 300% increased damage, which is easy to achieve, you already have pumped out up the value of this rune up to a 6. So, you see, this one scales quite quickly, quite massively, and is therefore a quite nice option. I would rather not go for stuff like the tier rune, although it has its, uh, its qualities, but only if you are already deeper down the road and in the higher difficulty levels where your burst damage is growing more important. But before that, I would say you're really well off with the Athel rune, the Kalk rune, and eventually the Gar rune if you want to pick up some flat damage. For the armor slots, well, what can I say? Nothing beats armor increase on the um, on the on this class. There's only a couple of the uncommon and mythic runes which really would uh, be a alternative to the Ethel rune, but after all, more armor is imperative. The more armor you have, the easy, the more trivial your fights grow. Because I made the experience: if you run around with like thirty or forty um, armor flat as a bonus your feints moves grow crazy because you gain barrier equal to 100% of your armor. So every 10 points of armor are 10 points of extra barrier on your feints, even more on the unbreakable feints card. So enough of that, I think I, I made my point. I hope that was kind of helpful to everybody who was kind of lost on this class or wanted to know if uh, he understood the basic concept. This is by far only the tip of the iceberg, of course, so if you want to know more about this class, please let me know, but this would be more of an advanced tutorial for sure. So drop your comments down below, leave a thumbs up on that video if you liked the show, and of course check out my channel, leave a subscription, and turn on those notifications if you don't want to miss any content in the future. Besides that, down there in the box, you'll find my Discord channel where I do daily streams. And last but not least, you'll also find ways and means to support this channel project more directly via Patreon, coffee, or whatever might uh, scratch your itch. Check it out if you wanna, or don't you mind at all, I don't mind either. I'm very, very grateful for your time here, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye!